Imagine, if you will, that you are living a happy life. You come from a secure background and a prestigious family. You have a partner that you love enough to marry. Together, you have two children and live in a comfortable and spacious home. But one day, something happens. Something so terrible that you are forced to take your family and run. Run away from everything you know everything that you have worked so hard to build, to run from your life and into uncertainty. This is the mysterious case of the Pearl Lady. Viewer discretion is advised. Here at Dark Case Documentaries, we release at least one new true crime video every week. I hope that you will join the Dark Case family by subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. And please consider further helping us in our work by supporting us on Patreon. Link is in the description. Our love and respect goes out to all those involved in this strange case. Officers were sent to 300 Three Rivers Parkway in North Bend on November the 29th, 2006 to recover a woman's body from the Ohio River. She was discovered wearing jewellery, including two necklaces made of beads that resembled pearls, earning her the moniker Pearl Lady. She was dressed in black with white socks, grey shoes, tan nylon pantyhose and a black shirt and skirt. She had been passed for around two days. According to the results of an autopsy, no suspicious evidence was found. The unnamed woman, who had hazel eyes and a light complexion, experienced arthritis in numerous places of her body. She only had one dental filling, which led examiners to conclude that she had extraordinarily well-kept teeth for someone her age. Although there were no overt signs of foul play, she had fractured bones where she entered the river, including her ribs, suggesting that she had fallen into the water from a height. The case was cold for almost eight years. For a number of years, we tried various different methods to identify her, Hamilton County Sheriff's Office Detective Brian Williams said. She was put on a Jane Doe network and name us a national database for missing people. Nothing ever came around. However, all of that changed on May the 7th, 2014, when the FBI discovered a match between the woman's fingerprints and those taken from a 1986 shoplifting arrest in Covina, California. She had been arrested for grocery store theft. The Pearl Lady finally had a name. Barbara Rose Precht. When Detective Brian Williams was given the case, he claimed that there were few leads to work with. But now he knew that Barbara Precht was born in Cincinnati, a good place to start. After searching for births, marriages and deaths, Williams had a breakthrough. Williams said, I found out that she married a guy by the name of James Precht and they had two children. I now had two children and a husband, but where were they and why was it that nobody was looking for her? He could deduce that Barbara's husband and children were still alive, but with no open missing persons case, the situation threw out yet more questions. Barbara Precht, who was born Barbara Hess in 1937, came from a well-to-do family in Cincinnati. Her father, Otis Hess, served as a local bar association president, and he worked for 45 years as a Hamilton County judge. While residing in Indian Hill, Ohio, she met and married James Brecht, a school administrator. The couple bought a house in Indian Hill. They had two children and settled into what from the outside was seemingly a normal life. So how did Barbara go from the daughter of a rich and powerful man to being arrested for shoplifting chocolate chip cookies? We have to go all the way back to 1983. After eventually tracking down and speaking with Barbara's children, Detective Brian Williams said, One of the girls awoke in the middle of the night from an argument and vaguely remembers two individuals in the house, possibly with guns. A couple of nights later, the family packed up a few things and left. Shortly after this, in 1983, 
Barbara and James made the decision to leave Ohio for California, where they lived under alias names. An unverified source on Reddit said, I actually went to school with the youngest daughter, Muffy, until 8th grade when she and her family disappeared in 1983. I remember my mum telling me that it was as if they fell off the face of the earth, as their home looked as if they had just walked out the door to go to the store. There were dishes in the sink, clothes on the bedroom door, etc. I knew her well enough that I went to her house on occasion. I can best describe my memories of Muffy and her family as being mousy or goody two-shoes-ish. I was always intrigued by their disappearance, especially since hearing Mrs. Precht was identified as a Jane Doe nicknamed the Pearl Lady. It seems unbelievable. Another Reddit user alluded to the idea that they could have been the victims of intimidation by the Mafia. I can confirm from all my reading on the Mafia that back in the day, the Kentucky side of the river from Cincinnati was considered wide open for mob activity. Do you believe this could have been the case? A quiet family terrified for their lives. Until Barbara Precht was arrested for stealing groceries, including chocolate chip cookies, Pringles, spaghetti and Colby cheese, presumably to feed her children, the family lived as kind of nomads in California with no fixed address. Soon after this arrest, Barbara and James handed the daughters over into the foster care system. Perhaps the couple realised that things were going downhill fast, and if indeed they were fleeing from a criminal organisation, Barbara's arrest could blow their cover and reveal their location. Putting distance between themselves and their children may have been a matter of protection. This is of course speculation, but I would love to hear your thoughts and if you agree in the comments. You know, out of all this mystery and the, the men in black, and the one thing that jumps out at me over and over again is she wanted to feed her family. Whatever mess she was in, she went about it the wrong way, yeah. but she was a mom mm -hmm. who was going to get food to her daughters. Mm -hmm. They didn't have any choice but to put their children in foster care, and they tried after that to make ends meet, but weren't able to. They weren't running from something as far as I know. Precht said that there was a position for him on the West Coast, said Detective Brian Williams. Hamilton County Coroner Dr. Lakshmi Samarko said, This wasn't a mom abandoning her children. This was the hardest decision she had to make to give them up for their own safety. That's what it seems to me. They put their children up for adoption, likely for their protection, and so that they would have better lives. Dr. Samarco also considered the potential that one of them may have been enrolled in the Witness Protection Scheme. Prior to Barbara's death in Cincinnati more than 20 years after her arrest, no one claimed to have seen or heard from them since they fled. Thinking about trying to find her husband. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm very set on trying to figure out what happened to him, where he is, and was he around. Did she come here to meet him? Yes, that's what I'd like to know. In 2014, husband James Precht was now 79 years old. Police tracked him down to a friend's apartment and moved in to arrest him. James Precht introduced himself as Jim Tooman. Police quickly discovered this to be an obvious lie. Was Jim Tooman the name that he had been using whilst on the run with his family? He had a $15,000 bond issued because he refused to cooperate with investigators. Police claim that they do not intend to prosecute him in his wife's death until new evidence arises, despite the fact that he never reported his wife missing, which is very suspicious behaviour. His whereabouts at the time of his wife's death were unclear. However, at this time, he was labelled a person of interest. Brian Williams said that before Barbara's body was discovered in 2006, the husband and wife relocated back to Cincinnati. The reason for this move is unknown. He said that the couple had little contact with their children that lived out of state. He was concealing his identity and there were a lot of unanswered questions, Williams said. I do not know how Barbara died. Was her husband there when it happened? Were they separated? Why didn't he report her? There are lots of questions, he added. 
As a note from me, I find it interesting that the couple fled from apparent danger and gave up their homes, jobs and children to do so. They gave up their entire lives. It feels like there was a threat and it was very real to them. And then after returning after over 20 years, Barbara came to harm almost immediately. Very thought-provoking and very strange. James Precht's hearing was on December the 2nd, 2014. His trial started on December the 4th, two days later. He is a person of interest in his uh, wife's disappearance and death. In a plea deal, James Precht admitted to a charge of disorderly behaviour during the trial, bringing his time to serve to 25 days in jail, the bulk of which he had already served awaiting trial. He has yet to give a uh, viable explanation as to what occurred with her, and um, we would just hope that the uh, court would be willing to help us um, keep track of him for the time being because he did disappear for a number of years and he is unable to uh, provide identification or his whereabouts. Instead, he was taken back to jail. Locked up already for 21 days, he was given a total sentence of 25 days. Early next week, the walk out of jail, mystery unsolved. However, as he continues to be a person of interest in the investigation, prosecutors asked that he be put on probation. During the time of the court case, it was revealed that James and Barbara were in massive debt at the time that they fled. In 1980, the couple took out a loan on their property. In 1983, the couple's debt amounted to hundreds of thousands of dollars. This same year, the bank sued them for failure to repay their loan. In addition, there was at least $50,000 of personal loans taken out by the couple. So, who were the possibly armed men that the daughter remembers entering the house shortly before the family fled? Why did the family need so much liquid money? What made them flee and what made them feel safe to return in the early 2000s? Was it just a coincidence that Barbara washed up, deceased? shortly after. What do you think took place? With all the facts at hand, this case raises more questions than it answers. For more dark cases, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you would like to support our work further, please consider supporting us on Patreon, just like our current patrons, Awkward Autistic, Shane Woodward and David James. Your help and support is greatly appreciated. For supporting me on Patreon, I will thank you at the end of each video that is produced during your time supporting me. Additionally, you'll be credited in the video's description. And you will gain access to Patreon DMs, which will give you priority case suggestion. It costs just £4 in UK money or your local equivalent. The support it will provide me and the channel will allow the continuation of this work. Thank you all in the Dark Case family and I'll see you soon.